This is John Black, Super Journalist. Uh, this is just a disclaimer to let you know that uh, this video is not intended to be imitated, uh, no parts of it. Uh, it should not be copied or done by you or anybody. It's just for educational and maybe entertainment purposes to watch. That's it. I don't condone anyone repeating anything in the video. I'm here today to make some uh, iron sulfate, uh, iron 2 sulfate. Uh, I have a video up already called How to Make Ferrous Sulf Ferris Sulfate or Iron 2 Sulfate, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's one of my top three videos. I have three videos that have like 3,000 views, 4,000 views or something like that. And the rest I'll have between like 100 and 700. So this is one of those videos. So I've decided to make it again, but make it a different way. Uh, the original one, we exchanged metals. We had copper sulfate in solution, and we just threw some iron in there, and that iron and copper switched places. So copper came out as a, as a solid, and the iron went in as a ion. And then we filtered out the copper and evaporated the water to get our salt. This time we're going to do it a different way. We're going to put the iron into sulfuric acid. You can see you end up with a salt, iron sulfate. The H2 will come off as um, hydrogen, hydrogen 2. And uh, I'm just going to basically do molar amounts. I'm not going to, you know, usually I cut it down, but this isn't that much. 53 milliliters of sulfuric acid, 56 grams of iron. And since it's 95%, which I'm guessing, I'm going to put in 56 milliliters. Um, keep in mind, this is a heptahydrate, I think. And if so, it would be 700, I mean, 278 grams. But only 152 grams is going to be the actual salt. 126 grams will be the water of crystallization that's locked up in that crystalline substance. And, of course, the hydrogen is going to evaporate off. All right, I want you to recognize two things. One is if you got 95% sulfuric acid, the milliliters are exactly what the grams are of these two things you need. So it's easy to do the math if you want one, you know, if you have one gram of this and one milliliter of that. You have 10 of this, then 10 of that. It's that simple, simple to do the stoichiometry. Now I got five grams of uh, iron in there, and I got five milliliters of sulfuric acid concentrated. I'm gonna just pour it in there and see what it does. That stinks. Kind of smells like sulfur. Oh, that wasn't smart. I thought it turned green. It still looks gray. I don't know why this didn't turn green. Let's add some water. Then I'll add another five milliliters. Maybe it's because it's just sulfate in there and you need to heat it up or something. I mean, it's, still, it's gray. Oh, crap. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that helped. <laughs> oh, Alright, here's the deal with that. Anytime you use concentrated sulfuric acid or acid that is not dilute enough, then you will oxidize this down to SO2 and water. You'll still get some some of your product, but you're going to get some SO2. So you want it to be dilute. Sulfuric acid is just a, too strong of an oxidizer. Anyways, there's my apparatus. It's down on the bottom there, right here. Got a round bottom flask. And then I got a three-way adapter there. Uh, so I can add my sulfuric acid. And I already have the uh, 
in case I have to heat it, I got some boiling chips in there and I got some uh, the metal. But anyways, brown bottom flask comes up. You got your equalizing funnel to add the sulfuric acid. I'm going to drip it in. This is just a dead port. And then here I got a Vigrex column and a condenser. And up on the top, I got a little thing here just so it can come. Oh, I better open the valve. So it can only come out that little hole there. It's overkill, I admit, but. And I'm just going to uh, drip it in. We'll see what happens. This one, though, I, I figure I got to recrystallize it, so I'm going to add like. 150 milliliters of water, maybe 100 mil milliliters or something like that. Alright, I got the acid mixed in with 100 milliliters of water. I started it dripping it. It's like adding baking soda to uh, vinegar, you know what I mean? Or opening up a prop that was shaking. You're going to have effervescence with that hydrogen trying to get out. I'll just add a little bit of time. That's all I'm going to do. When I see it getting carried away, I'm going to stop it a little bit, you know. Without there being much liquid in there, it can't fizz up too much at first. Basically it. Keep dripping it. I right, know we're going a little too fast. But first is about it's definitely producing hydrogen. See it bubbling. This is going to fizz. I'll try to do this as slow as possible. Well, half that water and sulfuric acid mixture is in there. Half of it is. I still don't, don't see anything green. Just looks like clear liquid. Clear liquid with uh, metal in it. Well, I just added another 200 milliliters to that flask there that had the concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, I looked in my notes and it says that you, if you have it too concentrated, one, it, some of your sulfuric acid will break down into SO2 and uh, water instead of hydrogen. So. I want to make it more. That's why I, when I was doing that other little sample, I said, "Man, that smells like sulfur," uh, because it was SO2. All right, look. This is the formula in Wikipedia for chromium two sulfate. And you'll see that they're, chromium and iron are almost exactly alike. I mean, they're not, but they're very similar. And if this is enough water to be dilute enough so that it doesn't produce the SO2 for chromium, five water molecules, then it should be good enough for iron. I used 100 milliliters. You can see this is 90 milliliters. So I used 10 milliliters more than I needed. So adding this 200 milliliters more, it can't hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but according to my guesses, it should be enough for 100 milliliters. But I have found that I think no matter how dilute you make it, you're still going to get some SO2. You know what I mean? You're going to get less the more dilute it is. But I think you're going to get it up any, no matter what you do. At least a little tiny, tiny bit. Well, I still have a lot of water. See there? Well, it's also uh, sulfuric acid. But it's still not green at all. I mean, I do smell a little bit of SO2, 
but from this reaction, I barely any. You know, just every once in a while, I, and I got to put my nose all the way up to the, you know, the hole on the top of the ap glass apparatus, and really take a sniff. You know what I mean? This is not heated up really. It's heated up 10 degrees, and five of that was just because I added the sulfuric acid to the water, and then later I add more water to the sulfuric acid, and that heat, you know, that's exothermic. Usually when you do something like this, you know what I mean, it, it, heats, it heats up. Anyways, I'm still dripping it in because I added that 200 milliliters of water. You know, it's taking even longer. It keeps bubbling. Still wasn't that hot. It's about 30 degrees. Started out at 18. I'm just going to take a break from this for a while. When I put my nose up there, I don't know if it's SO2 or it's, it's, it smells like chromium. I'm thinking maybe I used chromium by mistake. Cause oh, there it goes. I'm done. I added everything. I don't know if you can see, but it's still bubbling because I just added some. But it was pretty much died down right before I added that little last bit. So I took the took the funnel off over here, replaced it with a cap and I'm just going to wait for that bubbling. All this stuff is high there. Here, let me shake it. There's a lot of metal in there but it's not, not no clumps or anything like that. It's, well this has been sitting here a while you can't really see, but it's still bubbling in there. I got it set up for uh, reflux. All right, check this out. The liquid is still gray. It's not any kind of green or anything. I don't get this at all. Um, but I want to just I want to reflux it to get this because I still got stuff down here. I don't know if you can see the metal. See how there's two different colors there. That metal is like a film on the bottom of that. But. Uh, all right, so I got my round bottom flask, right? Comes up to a two-way adapter. This is just capped. I just wanted to move my reflux. I just wanted to move my condenser over a little. And there's my condenser. And it goes up to this tube. The tube goes all the way around, down, around that bowl there, and inside the bowl, and I have sodium hydroxide water there. Just a little bit of sodium hydroxide. So I'm just going to heat this up, and hopefully we'll can complete this reaction funny is this the smell what's funny is the smell that I smell is the same exact smell when I make chromium chloride I put chromium metal inside hydrochloric acid so I mean if it's SO2 why did I why did it happen I didn't there was no sulfur containing products in chromium or hydrochloric acid so why did it why does it smell the same if it's SO2 I don't understand that Unless I'm using chromium metal and I just think it's iron metal. I don't know what the deal is with this experiment so far, but watching I shake it, maybe you can see it bubble. Just a little bit, you know what I mean? But it's still bubbling. So let's heat it up. Holy crap, like within a second of putting that heat on, it's starting to bubble big time now. As you can see that. I had to turn the heat off. It was going too. I don't want it. it was going too fast. I was afraid it's going to go up the condenser and crack it. I've broken enough glass this week. But I did notice. I looked down at the bottom. On camera. But it's actually green. Finally green instead of gray. It's kind of a gray green. You want to hear the rest of the experiment you'll have to watch uh, part two video coming up next and always remember science is great